This year we celebrate 70 years the reestablishment of our beloved country Israel. 70 years is monumental, for a man's days are 70 years on earth. For the first time in 2,000 years, a Jew could be born in the land of Israel, live a full life, die in the land of Israel, free, never knowing the exile. This year we celebrate 1948. 1,948 years ago, the Roman Empire destroyed our lives. They burned and demolished our temple and exiled the Jews from Jerusalem, all while gloating their vicious imperial conquest and victory. The Jews rebelled and fought valiantly for their freedom. The rebellion was crushed and the Jewish people found themselves homeless, helpless and lost for centuries upon centuries. The long and bitter Jewish exile reached the darkest time in human history. As we celebrate 70 years, we must remember where we were only 74 years ago. And I saw a great open space with dry bones. Can these bones live? Only you know. After the UN voted in favor of the partition plan on May 14, 1948, the fifth of ER, the British mandate was due to expire. The year was fraught with countless dangers, escalating Arab violence across the land of Israel, combined with threats of annihilation from every bordering country. American President Harry Truman, in a power play against Russia, began to pressure the United Nations to reject the partition plan and snuff out Israel's hope for independence. The generals of the Haganah and Palmach stood together opposing Ben-Gurion's plan to declare a state. On May 13th, the eve of the Declaration of Independence, General George Marshall, then Secretary of State of the United States, sent Ben-Gurion a brutal ultimatum, demanding the postponement of the Declaration of Independence. Marshall, together with the Secretary of Defense, James Forrestal, imposed a military embargo. They threatened that Ben-Gurion's Declaration of Independence would trigger a regional war, which would doom the Jewish people to a second Holocaust in less than 10 years and the United States would not provide any assistance to the Jews. Intel arrived that Britain had supplied arms to Egypt, Jordan, and Iraq, preparing them for the attack. The Palmach force of the Haganah numbered only 300. They had almost no equipment and no uniforms. Only half the men in each unit had guns. All of the freedom fighters of Israel, the Haganah, Etzel, and Lehi together, numbered only a few thousand. On the eve of the declaration, Israel's army was ill-equipped, unorganized, with no tanks, no real air force, and no battle plan against five professional armies, trained and funded by the British. How could the Jews defend themselves? Standing alone against Israel's top military and political ranks, betrayed, isolated, and threatened by the international community, including the United States, with Arab armies invading from every front, it was now, or maybe never, Under extraordinary pressure, a self-proclaimed secular Zionist, David Ben-Gurion, was overcome, possessed with a Ruach Gvura, a courageous spirit of biblical proportions. And just like that, 2,000 years of exile came to an end. 1,948 years ago, Jerusalem was destroyed. We are celebrating the most legendary comeback story in human history. Can these bones live? Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. Thus says the Lord Hashem, I'm going to open your graves and lift you out of your graves, my people, and bring you to the land of Israel. From dry bones and ashes, total despair and desperation, Israel was resurrected from the dead and new life was breathed into the Jewish people. Seventy years ago, there were 600,000 Jews in Israel. 
Today, there are over 6.5 million from over 100 countries. In 70 years, Israel went from having one asphalt road to building Ben-Gurion International Airport, some of the best hospitals in the world, and built more roads and infrastructure per capita and faster than any other place on the planet. Israel has transformed a barren, desolate, non-productive land into one of the most powerful economies in the world. There are more Torah institutions and more Jewish learning in the land of Israel than any other time in Jewish history. From a group of underground and underarmed freedom fighters, the IDF has emerged as one of the most respected militaries in the world. The number 70 is represented in Hebrew by the letter Ein, which also means I. For 1,948 years, the Jewish people have been praying, May our eyes see your return to Zion. We're not praying that one day we hope to see your return to Zion. Let our eyes see that it's already happening right now.